In this video, we'll talk about dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter. Dopamine is associated with motivation, reward, euphoria. That means it's kind of like a feel-good factor. Dopamine is a monoamine and chemists call them catecholamine. So let's talk about the dopamine biosynthesis. Dopamine is synthesized from the amino acid tyrosine. Tyrosine gets converted to L-dopa with the help of the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase. L-dopa gets further converted to dopamine by a decarboxylation reaction triggered by aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase. Once dopamine is synthesized, dopamine gets packaged into the synaptic vesicles where it is released in the synaptic cleft. Now once released, dopamine binds to dopamine receptors. Dopamine receptors are metabotropic receptors. That means they are G-protein coupled receptors. There are two categories, D1-like receptors, which involves D1 and D5, and D2-like receptors, which involve D2, D3, and D4. So all the D1-type receptors are GS-coupled. That means they activate adenylate cyclase and generate cyclic AMP. And the D2 receptors are actually GI-coupled receptors. That means they inhibit adenylate cyclase. In different circuitry, we get different balance of these kind of receptors, and that modulates the difference in the dopamine response. Dopamine uptake is really important because once released in the cleft, it doesn't stay in the synaptic cleft for long. It is getting reuptaken by specific transporters known as dopamine transporters. And eventually, they get degraded and cleared out from the synaptic cleft. Now, dopamine breakdown is a regulated process. Dopamine gets converted to 3,4-dihydroxyphenyl acetic acid with the help of monoamine oxidase or MAO. Dopamine can also get converted to 3-methoxytyramine with the help of cathecol o methyl transferase. And both these products can eventually be converted to homovanillic acid and thereby dopamine is degraded. So there are particular medications such as MAO inhibitors or COMT inhibitors which prevent the degradation of dopamine, allow the dopamine to persist and these are antidepressants and many other cases these medicines are used. So let's ask where can we find dopaminergic neurons in our brain. So if we look at the brain, we can find dopaminergic pathways in various places. First of all, we should see the dopaminergic neuronal cell bodies in the ventral tegmental area and also in the substantia nigra. So all the pathways are projecting towards either cortex, which is known as the mesocortical pathway, or the striatum, which is known as the nigrostriatal pathway, which projects from the substantia nigra to the striatum and also the mesolimbic pathway. The mesolimbic pathway is red highlighted because this is associated with motivation. The mesocortical pathway is associated with cognition, memory, emotion, learning, etc. Whereas the nigrostriatal pathway is involved in sensory stimuli, movement, motor control, etc. But mesolimbic pathway is specifically associated with pleasure, reward seeking behaviors, addiction, emotion, etc. Now let's talk about dopamine and disease. When we talk about dopamine, the first thing that comes in our mind is Parkinson disease. Because in the Parkinson disease, the key pathological symptom is the death of dopaminergic neuron in the substantia nigra. So if we look at the normal individual, we can see the substantia nigra look like this, a black band because of the presence of neuromelanin. And it is basically meaning the black substances. Now if we compare that with the Parkinson patient, we can see the substantia nigra is reduced in the appearance and there is a massive cell death in substantia nigra. So the motor coordination problem in Parkinson disease is associated with the dopamine deficiency. So when the dopamine levels are low, there could be tremors, uncoordinated movement, shuffling of the gait, overall dysregulated motor behaviors. Now there are specific medications which prevent the do dopamine reuptake. So dopamine reuptake if it is inhibited, then dopamine would persist in the synaptic cleft for longer or, or dopamine degradation inhibitors such as MAO inhibitors can also be useful to treat these kind of Parkinson disease. Now, dopamine can also be associated with addiction. For example, cocaine addiction is associated with dopamine. 
कोकेन एक्चुअली ब्लॉक्स द रियाप्टिक ऑफ डोपामिन दैट मीन्स डोपामिन परसिस्ट इन द सिनेप्टिक क्लेफ्ट फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम विच गिवस अस अ यूफोरिया लाइक फीलिंग एंड दैट्स वाई यू गेट अ क्रेविंग फॉर मोर एंड मोर ऑफ कोकेन राइट एंड दैट्स हाउ यू गेट अडिक्टेड so in this video in short we looked at dopamine biosynthesis dopamine uptake dopamine breakdown where we can find dopaminergic neurons in the brain dopamine and disease dopamine and addiction you can get notes and flashcards in my facebook page follow us on instagram all the links are provided in the description you can support the channel via bhim upi app or paypal or paytm so if you wish to support you can click on the super thanks option which is in the bottom right corner of the video and see you in the next video in case you want to get connected with us in social media feel free to do so all the links are provided in description